Hey guys, I wanted to show you how to get started with the Digilent Basis 2 um, by programming it to just blink an LED, covering all aspects from program creation up to uploading the binaries to the actual board. So let's get started. <music> So let's go ahead and open up ISE by going to our terminal and typing ISE. Now I've already gone through and actually made this uh, blinky LED program, uh, but we're going to start over. I'm just going to copy my code, uh, which you'll be able to find at the link down below from GitHub. So we're going to go file, new project, and that's just going to bring up this uh, create project screen. We're going to put in a name for the project. We're going to call this one Basis Blinky. Uh, we're going to want it to be an HDL because we're doing this in Verilog. And kind of go through all these values here. Uh, evaluation Development Board, we're not going to specify that. We are working with the Spartan 3E. Um, this is the XC3S100E package. Uh, this, or device, this package um, selection here is often it defaults to uh, I think VQ, VQ 100 you want to make sure that this is set to CP 132 or else your pinouts gonna be wrong when it comes to your uh, constraints file or your UCF then uh, we'll leave the speed uh, XST the synthesis tool is fine uh, the simulator fine. we're gonna want to make sure that that's bare log um, store all values VHDL go ahead and hit next um, this is just a summary of the project, so we're going to click Finish, and that'll start up our new project here. So from here, we're going to go ahead and go to Project, and we're going to cl click New Source. And with this new source, um, we'll go ahead and just do the, uh, the very long module to start. We'll call this our top module, and click Next. Now we're going to need inputs and outputs. You can do this here, or you can do this later in the script. Um, I'll go ahead and put like one in here just so one or two in here just so that we can have that script auto created for us um, so that when we look at it um, when you go to do this you'll have kind of a an example of how to put in inputs and outputs uh, so our clock is going to be our input and actually I'm going to call that m clock here and it's just going to be one bit we'll have an output uh, we'll call that led and we're actually going to make that a bank of outputs so let's call this a bus and we'll call it three down to zero. We'll just use four of the LEDs there. We'll go ahead and click next. And this is just another summary of the, the project that we're creating um, and the, or the source that we're creating. Click finish and it'll start you up with this guy right here. Um, now I've already gone through and made this, so I'm gonna copy paste, but you'll see that it, it starts you out with this stuff and this is kind of your base module. Oop. And this is kind of your base module here. Uh, you got, you know, the module declarations, um, input uh, M clock and output three down to zero LED. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and paste in the code that I have, the code from GitHub. So what I want to do here is go ahead and add another source by going to project, new source. And then I'm going to go down here and find implementation constraints file. And for me, I'm just going to call it const and then we're going to go ahead and hit next and we're going to finish this is going to give us a blank file um, as i've said before i've got a link to the code down below at my github account you can go and copy paste that which is essentially exactly what i'm going to do here so i've already got it open in my uh, notepad text editor over here i'm just going to go ahead and uh, select all copy and then i'm going to close this file out and i'm going to paste it in here so a constraints file basically tells the program what pins of the FPGA uh, you want to use for doing certain things or what you want to tie different pins of the FPGA uh, together with your program. This contains all the pins and the pinout for the uh, basis to board. And what I want to do is just take the ones that I really want to work with, um, which is going to be the LEDs and the clock, net M clock. Um, so this should tie just fine um, to, we'll make sure our names are right, MCLK and lowercase LED. So I'll go in here and look 
uh, lowercase led mclk. So this should work just fine with our program. So we'll make sure that we're clicked on top V and then we're gonna go down to generate programming file and run all. So I cut back here to uh, save us some time. Um, one thing that I'd forgotten to do is right click on generate programming file, go to process properties, go to your startup options, and then change CC clock to JTAG clock. Then click apply and okay. Now regenerate these files and we should be good to go. Um, you can do a synthesize only here or an implement design only here. Um, if you have a simulation file, um, you could you would run that differently. Okay. So to upload bit files to the Digilent Basis 2 FPGA, we're going to need to download the ADEP software. So we're going to go into our browser and you're going to go to the link that I've provided. Um, scroll down on this page until you get to download here. Now since I'm working in Linux, I'm going to go ahead and download the runtime edition all OS is version 2.20.2 download. Now this is going to make you put in your information. Um, I'll put that information in, click submit, and then I'll bring you back. So after you enter that information, make sure at this bottom window here with the operating system uh, that you click on the proper operating system for what you're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. I'm going to minimize this window here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and open that up. Uh, we'll go into our downloads folder. We'll find this uh, digital adept runtime. And we're going to open this tar GZ and we're going to extract it to another place. I'm just going to leave it in my downloads for now. Go ahead and extract. Show the files. Uh, we made sure that it was extracted. We know that it's in this folder here. So what, now what I'm going to do is go into my terminal. I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up a new terminal since I have ISC running. I'm going to minimize this guy. Then I'm going to search down into my files. First we're going to go to our downloads, change directory or CD downloads. And then we're going to change directory into this file that we extracted. Then we'll use ls to look at the files in the folder. Uh, we see that we have this install.sh. Um, we're just going to go ahead and give that permission to run. So let's go ch mod plus x and then that file name. And then we're going to hit enter. That'll make it runnable. We can tell so by typing ls. And now what we can do is dot forward slash and then the install name. Click enter. I'm going to maximize my window here. Now it says that I'm going to need super user privileges or that I might. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that with control C. And we're going to go ahead and push up to get back up to that. And I'm going to put sudo in. And then hit enter. Uh, put in our password. And it asks what directory we should put our libraries in. So I'm just going to let it put it where it defaults here, uh, which is user local lib64 digital and adept. And I'm going to hit enter. And the same with this, I'm going to let it put it in user sbin. And the same with this. Just a lot of entering really. Um, same with this. And now we're installed. Okay, so now that we've got that first part installed, we need to go back to the, uh, the same web page and go down to the utilities uh, version here and we're going to download that as well um, for all OS and it's going to make you input your information again so I'll cut uh, past saying submit so to pop up this window here we'll go ahead and save that file and we're going to go open that guy as well basically the same way we're going to open that guy go to our downloads um, we're going to get the utilities now instead of the runtime we're going to open that up and we're going to extract that uh, we'll go ahead and just extract it to the downloads. And this time we'll just go ahead and close everything. And we're going to go back into our terminal uh, with a new terminal. And 
and we're going to navigate to that file. So CD downloads. We'll use an LS to see what all's in the file. Uh, we see that there's the runtime. We've already done that. So we're going to change directory to the utilities file. And then we're just going to do the same stuff here. We're going to find the install file, which now actually has the permissions to install. So we're just going to go ahead and run that uh, as sudo. And we'll go ahead and use the defaults for all of these as well. And now that's installed. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just restart my terminal here. So we'll open up a new terminal window. And uh, so first you're going to make sure your FPGA is plugged in. And uh, I'll put it down in the, the corner here in a little window. And then I'm going to run this command, DJTG CFG enum. And now that's going to show me the uh, the digital imp board that's hooked up. If you don't see this at this point, then you've got it hooked up wrong or you don't have the, the drivers downloaded. Um, if you do have problems, comment down below and we'll see if we can fix those together. So now that we know our board is hooked up, we're gonna put in this init, the init command for the Digilent software. And this is basically just gonna initialize the basis too. Um, I'll put this code down below as well. And that shows that we have two devices found. Uh, the top device, zero, may look familiar from what we put in earlier, and that's the actual FPGA. Uh, device one is the ROM. So at this point, device zero, if you're just wanting to test out code and run it and run it and run it and change it, uh, then you're gonna use device zero. If you wanna run actual code on the FPGA without it being hooked up to the computer, then you're gonna wanna use device one. Now, when it comes to doing that, you're going to change your clocks in the ISE software. Um, we'll go look at that real quick. If you go to Generate Programming File and right-click on it, go down to Process Properties, and then Startup Options. So since we're running this directly off the computer, we're going to use the JTAG clock. If you're running this without being connected to the computer and you're programming the ROM, you're going to use the CC clock. So we're going to leave this on JTAG clock. We'll hit OK. And once, if you were to change that, you're going to have to go ahead and rerun all of the, uh, the synthesis and generation of uh, bit file. So now we know all that, we can go in and put in an actual program command. So we're using that same first DJTG CFG and then a space and prog for programming. Then a space dash D that's for device. So after that, you put in the device name, which we found up there under enum, which is basis two, then a dash I to say which interface or which device on this board that you're going to actually program. We're going to program zero, which is the actual FPGA, then a dash F for the actual file that you're going to want to program, and then the name of the file. So after you've generated the program file um, using this, you can find the bit file in your directory where the project is stored. Um, so I've got this directory here. This is my basis blinky directory. Um, if I were, I mean, I can see the top bit here, but if I were to do it, just go ahead and search dot bit and you get the top bit there. And of course you can go through and go to your properties and copy the, the parent folder and then put top dot bit afterward. So that's what I've done here. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and program the board. And if you'll watch the board, when it's done programming, we'll get a blink on there. And it's as easy as that, guys. Um, if you have problems, uh, please comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, to see more videos. Uh, have a great day, and don't forget to love well.